Good morning, children. The southern part of the Indian Peninsula, situated south of the Krishna River, was inhabited by the Dravidians. They had their own language and culture. We read about all this in lesson the Sangam Age. The region was home to three powerful kingdoms: the Cheras, the Pandyas, and the Cholas. The most powerful of the three were the Cholas. So, children, today we will study about South India and the Cholas. As we will study the various topics, you will understand why the rule of Cholas is considered as the golden rule in South India. Now, let's study about the sources to reconstruct the age of imperial Cholas. Archaeological sources to reconstruct the age of imperial Cholas include the monuments, that is, the various majestic palaces and grand temples, temples built by the Cholas, and the inscriptions. Now, let us children take the archaeological sources in detail. The Bradeshwara Temple. The Cholas built majestic palaces and grand temples. One of the masterpiece of the Chola architecture is the Bradeshwara Temple, also known as Raja Rajeshwara Temple at Tanjavur. The temple was built by Raja Raja in 1000 AD and is dedicated to Lord Shiva. The temple provides the best examples of the Dravidian style of architecture. Some of the prominent features are the massive tower that is Viman rising to a height of some 180 feet. The tower being crowned by a massive dome which is a single block of stone weighing about 80 tons. The Garbhagriha housing the colossal Shivalingam is nearly 9 meters high. The outer doorway being flanked by two gigantic Dwarpalas the inner walls containing fine and bold sculpture of various deities inscriptions the inscriptions of the cholas are in the form of copper plate grants stone inscriptions and inscriptions made on the walls and pillars of temple these inscriptions are in tamil and sanskrit which have been discovered in various parts of the chola kingdom These inscriptions are the most trustworthy than other written records as they could not be tampered. The significance in is these inscriptions supply dates and refer to the conquest of the kings and the extent of their kingdom. The Bradeshwara temple inscription gives measurement of land grants that were gifted to the temples. Various copper plate inscriptions have been preserved in the museum of Leiden in the Netherlands. These are the records of the gifts of lands to temples by the Chola king Pratank in 10th century AD. Since they are preserved in the museum of Leiden in Netherlands, they are known as the Leiden grants. The inscriptions also refers to the deities to whom the temples are dedicated. They also throw light on the kingdom's religious and cultural history and also reflect the cooperative relationship among different religious groups of people the inscriptions also tell us about the chola administration and the most important among these inscription is the uttramer inscriptions which give us detail about the village administration under the cholas the two important rulers under whom the chola power rose to imperial greatness are raja raja 1 and rajendra 1 raja raja 1 made himself the ruler of whole of present state of tamil nadu parts of the state of karnataka and its adjoining regions sri lanka and other islands raja raja 1 was also a capable administrator a great builder and a patron of art and literature a chief mark of his administration system was the expansion of the ruler self governing institutions he constructed the famous bradeshwara temple also known as raja rajeshwara temple at tanjavur rajendra van gangaikonda 
ruled from 1014 to 1044 AD. He annexed the whole of Sri Lanka, organized the Pandyas and Kerala territories and the islands of Sri Lanka into a regular provinces of his empire. He overpowered Odisha and a portion of eastern Bengal. To commemorate his victories, he adopted the title of Gangaikonda and built a new capital called Gangaikonda Cholapuram. In 1025 AD, he dispatched a naval expedition for the conquest of Java and Sumatra. He built magnificent palaces and beautiful temples. The Administration of the Cholas The Chola administration is a combination of vigorous central control with a very large measures of local autonomy. We study the administration of the Cholas under five, the central administration, provinces and other territorial divisions, village administration, sources of revenue and military administration. Now, now let's take them one by one. The central administration consisted of the monarch, his ministers and other officials. The coronation ceremony of the king was marked by many festivities. The glory and the power of the king was enhanced by the huge resources of the kingdom, vast palace establishment and splendor of the court. The administrative system was operated by a large number of officials. The higher rank was the Perdunams and the lowest rank was Serdunams. Provinces and other territorial divisions. The kingdom was divided into a number of provinces called Mandalams. Each Mandalam was in charge of a viceroy who was basically a prince or he belonged to the landed nobility. The province was further divided into divisions called Kotams. The Kotams were further divided into districts called Nadus and the group of villages were called Kurams and the village was known as Gramam. All these territorial divisions had their respective assemblies to look after the administration of their regions. Village administration, also known as the Gram Sabhas, was the most remarkable feature of the Chola administration because of the exceptional efficiency of the village institutions as they enjoyed full power in the management of local affairs. The village assemblies administered justice within the village except for the serious crimes. They regulated water supply, gathered taxes and administered all charitable institutions. They could sell or donate land for religious purposes. The accounts were maintained with meticulous care in order to avoid fraud. Smaller committees were set up to help the village assembly to carry on its affairs. Sources of revenue. The land revenue was the most main source of the revenue, which was fixed at one sixth, one sixth of the gross produce. The other important sources of income were taxes on trade, mines, handlooms, water courses, and the customs, that is, the duties on imported goods. The expenditure of the kingdom were 1. The maintenance of the royal family, maintenance of the armed forces, construction of towns, temples and works of public utility. The military administration. The Chola rulers maintained a large, well-trained army and an effective naval force. The soldiers lived in cantonments called Kandagams, which were situated in different parts of the empire. So children, today we have studied about the Chola and under this we read about the archaeological sources to reconstruct the age of imperial Cholas 
the inscriptions and the Bhadeshwara temple. We also read about a brief estimate of Raja Raja Van and Rajendra Van Gangai Konda, the two main important rulers of the Chola dynasty. The administration of the Cholas, all right, the central, provincial and the village and the sources of revenue and military administration. Thank you and stay blessed.